Irreverent, controversial, and always hilarious, South Park's near two decades on the air have left a legacy of animated antics that fans continue to obsess over. From Mecha Streisand to singing Holiday Pooh and beyond, the series has given us a multitude of pop culture benchmarks and references that continue to delight and appall viewers in equal measure. A no-holds-barred commentary on the ever-evolving zeitgeist, South Park has always been utilized by creators Trey Parker and Matt Stone to critique, criticize, and make fun of current events and the world at large. Often, the show skews into zany, wildly inappropriate territory, and that's the reason it's endured so long. Never one to shy away from bathroom humor or crude jokes, the residents of South Park have been served up every manner of indignity known to man. Also, we can get a good laugh. Though, for a show that's not afraid to go there with the naughtiness, South Park is also a series with lessons to teach. Through every madcap adventure, the creators always install a kernel of truth about the human condition, and often serve reminders that the best way to not become a parody of yourself is to be a good person. Although it seems that South Park isn't the most likely place to turn for philosophical rumination, it has time and again proven to provide some wonderful gems for living a better life. So put on your snow caps because today we're going to be taking a look at some important life lessons that can be learned from Cartman and the gang. Let's go! Everything in moderation, including moderation. If the creators of South Park have a strong opinion, then it's that strong opinions tend to do more harm than good. South Park lambasts group after group by creating the logical extreme of said group. I'm willing to bet that just about everyone, myself included, has been insulted by South Park, and all of its victims are taken down by a handful of grade schoolers. And not the best or brightest grade schoolers either. And if you don't like South Park because it's so mean, that's okay. After all, hating everything is extreme. Choosing to always live in the middle is extreme as well. Parker and Stone seem intent to showcase that extremism, no matter the actual angle, is not a healthy way to live one's life. Have your beliefs, celebrate the beliefs of others, challenge your beliefs, and strive to be better. Good friends help each other, great friends commit crimes for each other. One of the core values of the show is the importance of friendship, and few moments provided us with more insight about what it means to be a friend than the episode where Stan wanted to give Kyle a kidney. Upon learning that Kyle would need a kidney transplant to live, Stan offers to give up one of his own, only to discover that he's not a match. Depressed over the looming and inevitable loss of his friends, Stan resolves to do anything in his power to help Kyle, no matter the cost. When he discovers that Cartman can provide the match needed, Stan hatches a plan that could only be conceived in South Park. Bloody beds, midnight home invasions, and falsified medical records lead to Stan helping Kyle get the organ he needs and their friendship is ensured to see another day. While we don't condone breaking the law or tricking anyone into giving up one of their vital organs, Stan's commitment to Kyle shows us a lot about selflessness and putting the needs of a loved one before our own. Few things hold more power than imagination, or more dangerous. In one of the series, most celebrated arcs, the boys, following a hunt to prove whether leprechauns exist, find themselves in the midst of a war of imaginary creations. Instigated by a bet between Kyle and Cartman over the complete impossibility that an imaginary character could exist in the real world, the escalating situation reveals that just because something is imaginary doesn't mean it's not real. Utilizing the storyline to lampoon many popular characters from other entertainment properties and pop culture, the heart of the Imagination Land story was about the importance of dreaming. The boys learn that just because something may be imaginary, it doesn't mean it doesn't have significance to the person who believes in it. As such, the characters and ideas we hold dear become very real and help shape who we are and how we see the world. So, if you can imagine it, then in some ways, it's real, and we'll take Strawberry Shortcake hostage. When Satan learned that it's okay to be alone sometimes, it seems unlikely that we'd learn anything of moral or personal value from the devil himself. But then again, parent groups the world over would tell me that South Park has no lessons to teach. Satan has the potential to provide us with a good life lesson. Longtime viewers of the show and its feature film spinoff are well aware that Satan had a long and complicated romantic relationship with one-time Iraqi dictator Saddam Hussein, a complicated relationship that led to at least one instance of near-nuclear war. Satan's association with Saddam is a definition of unhealthy, which, when it's a love affair between the devil and one of history's most wicked tyrants, we can imagine it would be anything other than problematic. Utilizing the fractured relationship to showcase a very real issue of people who feel trapped in toxic situations because they can't separate their feelings from the very dangerous reality, South Park's creators used a rather funny pairing to shine a spotlight on a very real situation that many people have struggled through. Satan pulls himself up by the bootstraps and kicks Saddam to the curb, finding a sense of peace and completion and being himself. In that moment, Satan realizes it's better to be alone than to be with someone who doesn't make you want to strive to be the best version of you. They say the devil's in the details, and in this case of self-empowerment, we couldn't agree more. That censorship isn't a replacement for talking to your kids. Censorship and complaints over content are no strangers to the creative team behind South Park. From the beginning, parent groups often cited the bathroom humor and foul language as a big negative for younger 
younger viewers and would demand Comedy Central pull the show from the air. So, when the series was given a big screen adaptation in the form of South Park Bigger, Longer, and Uncut, the film's storyline about the censoring of a subversive television program had an air of familiarity. Attacking the notion of censorship head-on, the film shows Kyle's mom bringing about a nuclear Armageddon in an effort to take a television show she deems reprehensible off the air. In one of the movie's more prescient moments, Mrs. Broflowski points out that it's easier to blame the television than take the blame as parents for not doing their job. Time and again, when incidents occur within communities, fingers get pointed at video games, cartoons, and film content as the blame for violent attitudes and behavior. Taking this argument into consideration, Parker and Stone use a movie to turn the finger back around at the accuser, pointing out that it's not so much the content of the art, but the dialogue that surrounds it in the home. One can see a violent movie and know that violence is reprehensible. It's more about talking things out, not hiding away from them and pretending they don't exist. With the South Park movie, the creators show us that censoring never leads to solutions, just creates more problems without means to express them. Don't get too focused on a single goal. One of the most infamous episodes of the show's first decade was one titled Make Love Not Warcraft, which saw our favorite bus stop gang get sucked into the all too addicting world of online role playing games. As the boys descended further and further down the rabbit hole of gameplay, they started to eschew real life and social situations, becoming incapable of living beyond what was happening on the screen. Furthermore, beyond inspiring online competition, the game led to real life contention among the friends, as well as a few extra pounds on Cartman's part. As much as we, being citizens of the internet and all, hate to admit it, the boys learned that it's good to unplug and step away from our lives online and take a minute to appreciate the world and people around us. The boys lost themselves to fantasy in another episode where they got a little too into Lord of the Rings, leading to some very enlightening moments for Butters. As we mentioned earlier, the show encourages flights of fantasy and using your imagination to take you to new heights, but keeping in line with Parker and Stone's ever-present warning of not taking things to extremes, they like to remind viewers that it's okay to appreciate the real world and strive to make that better too. Confidence is a key component of success. Despite the limitations of living in a small, snowed-in town in Colorado, the gang from South Park never let the world get in the way of their dreams. In fact, for all their failings, one thing you can say about the residents of the icy little village is that they have no problem going after their dreams, which has led to international fame for the characters on the show on more than one occasion. Take, for example, the fact that the boys once created their own teen pop band, or that Randy was revealed to be the pop singer Lord. All this was achieved because they believed in themselves. South Park shows the importance of setting a goal and working to achieve it. Few characters exemplify this more than Eric Cartman, whose schemes are often heinous in nature. Remember that one time he made a kid eat his own parents? Because we're still sure having dreams about that. But almost always executed in his favor. This is because Cartman, who refuses to acknowledge or see the failings of his plans, never doubts that they can be achieved. Thanks to his convictions, Cartman has been the spokesperson for Cheesy Poof, Spot a Theme Park, and Time and Again one-upped Kyle in otherwise nonsense bets. All of these successes, and occasional successful failures, poster child for Nambla episode, can be attributed to Cartman's belief in himself. Whether it's becoming a pop star or a world leader, South Park continues to show the audience that the key to achieving your dreams is confidence in your abilities to make them happen. Though, for the sake of us all, try and make sure your goals are a little more noble than Cartman's. We want to be able to sleep at night. Adults don't always have the answers. One thing consistent fans of South Park can tell you, there's not a single character on the show that gets out unscathed. Structured to mock after-school specials of yesteryear, the series format follows the adventures of Kyle, Stan, Cartman, and Kenny, and the rest of the elementary set as they discover the world and learn lessons. In similar shows, when things get dire for the children, they know they can always turn to their parents for advice and insight. However, South Park being, well, South Park, the adults are often as clueless, if not more so, than the kids. Often this leads to their own series of adventures, whether it's Kyle's mom leading a war against Canada, or Randy Marsh attempting to impress Stan with his guitar. The adults of South Park often add to the general chaos of the series by often revealing that they don't know what the hell is going on most of the time. Not only does this add to the humor of the show, but it also humanizes adults in a way that most shows centered around children do not. The truth is, no one ever feels like they've grown up. Even grown-ups. By making the parents as irreverent as a kid, South Park reminds us that sometimes adults don't have all the answers and are just trying to get by, just like everybody else. Even if this does mean Randy gets into fistfights with other people's dads. Often. You can find humor in anything. And you should. Perhaps the ultimate lesson that can be learned from South Park is the most obvious one. Take nothing too seriously. Just as Parker and Stone were able to use the movie to laugh at their own issues with censorship, the show reminds us that, overall, it's important to take the time and laugh at yourself on occasion. Nothing is too serious that it doesn't deserve a good, humorous roast from time to time. Because, often in humor, we also find essential truths. Life is short. Just ask Kenny. So, we might as well have a good laugh. Have you learned a valuable lesson from South Park? Maybe you're just here to tell us how much you love Butters. Well, we do too. Either way, leave a comment below, and don't forget to subscribe.